This example discusses how interfaces and property methods can work together in order to implement a useful abstraction for complex numbers. And this is a case where we're going to have multiple different representations of the same abstract data type. So for complex numbers, which have both a real and an imaginary component, they get represented in two different ways. One is to say, how much of, how, what's the magnitude of the real component and what's the magnitude of the imaginary component? So this would be 1 plus 1i, one or 1 plus the square root of negative 1, represented at this point on this plane. Now the same point, under a different coordinate system, can be represented by a magnitude and an angle. So how far away from the origin is 1 comma 1? Well, it's square root of 2 away, which is why we have this square root of 2. And what's the angle from the x-axis? Pi over 4 is the same as 45 degrees. So what we have here are two different ways to represent a point on a plane. In this case, the complex plane, where the horizontal axis is real numbers and the vertical axis is imaginary numbers. Whether you use this rectangular representation or this polar representation really doesn't matter for most applications. If you just pass around points and put them in lists, it doesn't matter how they're represented. But for complex numbers are easier to express in one representation or the other. In particular, let's say that we have two different classes that both represent complex numbers. So here's a complex number. 1 plus the square root of negative 1, or 1 plus 1i. One That's the number, and here are two classes that represent that number in different ways. We have one called complex real imaginary, which takes in the real and imaginary components. And then we have complex magnitude angle, which takes in the magnitude and the angle that describe the same point. So these are two different descriptions of the same number or the same point in the complex plane. Now, the reason we have two is that when we want to perform arithmetic, such as adding or multiplying together complex numbers, one of these is more convenient than the other. So in a class called complex, I'll define addition as just adding together two complex numbers by creating a new complex number out of its real and imaginary components, where I sum the reals of the arguments and I sum the imaginary components of the arguments. And we're done. Multiplying two complex numbers together is more complicated if you only know their real and imaginary components. But it's very easy if you know their magnitude and angle. So here, we can multiply two complex numbers by creating a new complex number with the product of their magnitudes and the sum of their angles. And that's how you multiply complex numbers together. OK, so what we're doing here is developing a system that has certain abstraction barriers. Parts of the program that use complex numbers to perform computation treat those complex numbers as whole data values, using, for instance, x.addy or x.molly, where x and y are complex numbers. So these don't care about which representation we're using. But the part of the program that actually implements addition is going to treat complex numbers as real and imaginary components using real and image attributes and the complex RI constructor. In order to multiply complex numbers, I'll use their magnitudes and angles, which are magnitude and angle attributes along with a constructor that makes a new complex number out of a new magnitude and a new angle. Now these two things aren't built on top of each other, but instead exist in parallel. So that's a different structure than we saw before. There is an abstraction barrier that gets us to lower levels of the program, such as however Python implements its object system, and we don't care about that for now. What we do care about is having two different representations of complex numbers coexist so that we can use them together in order to perform arithmetic seamlessly using our very simple implementation.